here we are at the Walmart by the cabin. Perfectly normal for this time of year, right? Perfectly normal. You have got to be kidding me. Really? 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 Whatever, Santa. We're only open. Every day, every day. Here we go. Let's make it a good day. in the hands of the Tuesday crowd, let me tell you. Yeah. Yeah. The harder you clap, the more cars were given away. <laughs> there we go, there we go. <laughs> that worked. Uh, welcome to the old show. First up, uh, from Kitty Cocktails to st uh, store shelves, it will soon be easier than ever to sip a childhood favorite. And here's what I mean, 7-Up, is uh, gonna release really soon 7-Up Shirley Temple. The cherry, yeah, oh, thank, thank you, Row 2. Yeah, the, the cherry flavored uh, soda will hit stores October 15th. It will be available in regular and sugar-free. The new drink comes after the New York Times declared the Dirty Shirley, the drink of the summer. Yeah. I mean. Let's settle down with that, but yeah. <laughs> My radio station actually does a, a Dirty Shirley. Well, that version adds liquor <laughs> to the kitty cocktail. I mean, that's, uh, yeah, yeah. That's my favorite. Let's get started. <laughs> Leo, cue the music. Here we go, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Fallon, everybody. Hi. Hello, dear friends. Hi, how, how are doing? you? Good, how are you? Good, how's your week? It's, it doesn't feel like Tuesday. It right? feels like That's a why I asked. Wednesday it's, or Thursday. It feels weird, it? yeah. It already feels like it's been a week. It does. I know. It does. I got to tell you, maybe, um, maybe you had this happen to you. Did you guys hear about the Verizon outage yesterday? Mm -hmm. A lot, some of you, anybody affected, clap by the Verizon, anyway, this is an- One person got it, one I person, just, you did it, you did it I did it again. Yeah. <laughs> I've said this, I, I, I've done this show for 10 years, never ask the studio audience questions because I'm setting myself up for failure. <laughs> I'm really setting, <laughs> anyway, no, um, so if you didn't hear, Verizon had a big old, a big old outage yesterday and uh, I'm a Verizon customer, proud of it. Uh, wish my bill was a little lower, but that's not why you called. But yeah, <laughs> just a little bit. Well, I mean, I have a few devices on there, but no. So yesterday, yesterday, uh, my husband talked to his mom, and <laughs> she, I'm in the dressing room, and he calls and he goes, oh, my mom has SOS on her phone. Oh, and I'm yeah. like, well, go rescue her. I mean, yeah, I mean, go rescue her. Yeah. He's like, no, and my mom has had that too. Hi, Dar. Uh, I know. My, yeah. <laughs> SOS for my mother-in-law means uh, the, the bar's out of Bud Light. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or the pull tabs have stopped. But no, but my, uh, my, my mom has had this too. And Colin went over there and, and helped her out. And I said, well, Colin, what did we do for my mom? He goes, I don't know. So my mother-in-law went down to the <laughs> to the Verizon store and guys I'm not kidding there were like a hundred people outside this Verizon store and the poor now this is what to me this is what the story is about I feel 
for every Verizon employee yesterday yes. because the poor woman working inside the store put a sign up on the window and locked the door. It was like, <laughs> I can't do anything. I can't, I, I it's can't, not no. Connie's fault. <laughs> Don't yell at Verizon Connie. Oh, yeah, poor so Connie. I just, uh, to all the Verizon employees out there that had to put up with all the angry people, I'm with you. I yeah. hear you. I'm sorry for you. Yeah. Well, I also love that you said Colin described the scene as the end of Beauty and the Beast when the villagers are charging the yes. beast castle. <laughs> and they're going after poor Connie, who's by herself. I and know. she had to tape a sign, leave me alone. <laughs> it's not my fault. I didn't unplug the network. Can you imagine that's what it was? Someone just knocked a plug out. Yeah, right? <laughs> and be. it was just only, again, I wasn't affected. Yeah. My, Colin wasn't. It was, I don't think my mom was. It was just a smattering of people. <laughs> including my poor mother-in-law, but uh, SOS. She, she SOS for Lori. <laughs> yeah, out of pool tabs. There we go. <laughs> let's get started. It's time for the hot dish. Rolling, Leo. Let's do this. Mm. Mm. Backlash for SNL. Saturday Night Live just kicked off its 50th season, and already one of the cast members is facing criticism. Oh God, this is just annoying me. Um, it's all it's all over this sketch that we showed you yesterday, featuring Bowen Yang dressed as the viral hippo and Fallon's best friend Mudang. I wish. Uh, so yeah. I wish. So. So he joked about being too popular and needing a break from the fame. Well, fans of, of uh, rising pop star Chapel Rowan says the sketch mocked the singer after she asked fans to stop harassing her, basically saying that that sketch uh, mocked her mental health struggles. Uh, Chapel also canceled a recent event, a gig too, I believe, to focus on her health. Well. Bowen quickly responded on Instagram saying he's always supported Chapel Rowan. He's a fan of hers. He even interviewed her recently. Um, I, I, I don't mean to sound like the old fuddy-duddy. Uh, I mean, I am 50 now, but I mean, I just, yeah. <laughs> To me, this is a bunch of oversensitive sallies taking satire the wrong way. It, it, it's just really, nobody's making fun. Nobody's making fun of her mental health uh, her mental health struggles. It's Saturday Night Live. Do they go too far sometimes? Absolutely, and I would have no problem calling them out. But this is this is an overstretch. Your look, this is uh, yeah. this is another example. You know what I'm going to say? We are in an age where people are just in the bushes, ha, waiting to be. Uh, <laughs> it's true. Just waiting to be outraged by anything. Everything. Just waiting in the shrubs, ha, just waiting. It's like stop it. The show has always taken what is like the biggest story in the news and done a parody of always. it. And Chapel Rowan is like one of the biggest pop stars right now, and she's making a lot of news because she keeps posting full rants on TikTok, and people have a lot of commentary about how she's handling fame. So, of course, they were going to kind of parody it, but I did not, and I am a fan of Chapel. I didn't walk away from that being like, oh, they're mocking her mental health. No, I think that they were kind of mixing in the Moodang hype and the Chapel Rowan hype like they would for any other celebrity. That is their job, yes. for heaven's sake. <laughs> Get a sense of humor. Mm -hmm. My goodness, you can't anyway. Uh, get off my lawn. Anyway, <laughs> that's not the only sketch getting attention. In the premiere, SNL also poked fun at Spirit Halloween stores, uh, joking, yeah, joking about them popping up everywhere uh, this time of year, uh, all over in vacant storefronts. Well, Spirit Halloween responded on X, sharing this costume for quote irrelevant 50-year-old TV shows. Yeah, <laughs> the fake. The fake costume. The fake costume includes dated references, unknown cast members, and shrinking ratings. Dang. I mean, they should hire that social media team to write for the show. Right? <laughs> yeah. I gotta say, touche for both of them. Yeah. The S that sketch was one of four that weren't a dumpster fire <laughs> on Saturday, and then whoever handles media relate or uh, social media for mm -hmm. Spirit Halloween, give that twenty-something a raise because <laughs> that was yeah. Next up. 
Next up in the dish, rumors are flying this morning about soon to be former Today Show co-host uh, Hoda Kotb. One report says there may be more to Hoda's upcoming exit from today. So according to Puck News, Hoda makes 20 million uh, a year and NBC asked her to take a pay cut. Hoda allegedly refused and then it helped her make the decision to leave the show. I'm sure her family had uh, a part of it. The reports say TV executives feel the high paying contracts are no longer worth it because there's shrinking revenue based on shrinking ratings. I don't want to get too inside baseball on this. This reads so true to me. I know even on the local level, I know anchors that back in the day when I first started in the 90s, I knew an anchor that was making close to a mill. A local anchor that was making close to a million dollars probably was making a million. Those days are over. I have several anchor friends who are taking pay cuts, not because the, 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 the networks are being mean, but because they have less revenue mm -hmm. coming in. Hoda, I can absolutely see that this happened. It just happened at CBS. Allegedly, you know, Jeff Glore was the anchor of the CBS Evening News for like uh, 30 seconds and then uh, got cut, moved to Saturday morning, and he just got cut in layoffs. Yeah. Why? Because he was probably making evening news money, mm. but working on the weekends. Yeah, I mean, yeah. obviously, yeah, working Allegedly, in, that's, yeah. that's my theory. I don't need CBS suing me. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that's how it is across media in general. I mean, you've probably if anywhere you work you've seen budget cuts on various things it's like they always say they don't we don't have a budget for this anymore we don't have a budget for this anymore so it's not surprising that that would be a partial reason and maybe an excuse she was looking for anyway like eh I don't know how much longer I'm going to do this. Then they didn't want to give her the money. And she's like, yeah, that's my answer. Yeah, like, exactly. It's happened. I mean, this set, I'm not going to get another new thing for 15 years, you know? <laughs> Fair, yeah. <laughs> got to write the check to the president of BDI. I got to, you know, he's right over there. We'll be right back. Back in a moment, everybody. <laughs> Eventbrite.com or get the Eventbrite app and get a ticket. Welcome back to the old show. Kate McKinnon is making the rounds promoting her first novel. Oh, that's fantastic. The Saturday night, the former Saturday Night Liver uh, joined uh, the Tonight Show Monday night and talked to, <laughs> talked about a big problem that she's dealing with at her house. Well, I had geese er earlier in this year in the spring, the first time with geese, and they were... It's beautiful. Uh, it was beautiful. I thought it was beautiful. Yeah. And then another family came, and they had like five goslings. And then another family came, and they had like seven teen goslings. There were so many birds in the yard. I began to feel put out. <laughs> I was like, I was like, am I? I'm running a resort for geese. This is a club med for geese. You actually brought a video of, of you noticing how many families of geese were in New York. Yeah, Look at yeah. this video here. Okay, so one. Two, three, four. Yeah. That's, that's a and giant. Four separate families with I don't know how many. That's that one has, well, look at all the birds. It's a lot of geese. You can watch the rest of it on the Tonight Show YouTube channel. I, look, I love all of God's creatures, uh, not all of them. I'll submit a list to you later, but yeah. But I, I, I'm, if I get hate mail, I don't care. I hate geese. I do. Okay. I, I'm sorry. All right. Because I had, really quick, I had a traumatic experience in my blue Ford Focus. I, uh, thank you for laughing at my Ford Focus. <laughs> But I got attacked by a goose. I was driving about 60 miles an hour in my Ford Focus in the car. In no, Aaron, on top area. of the car. Yeah. I was in the car, and the and the bird got lower and smashed into my windshield, and I almost drove off the oh, road. Oh no! Yeah, yeah. So I hate geese, and I'm okay with that. I'm comfortable with my hatred. Okay, I have always said to Jake. If a goose starts attacking me, don't save me, film it, because I want to go viral. And <laughs> I've always said that, because geese are shady. So, they are shady. But here's the real question. Would you rather encounter a goose or a turkey? 
Because they're both like, I don't want to mess with either of them. I I made Good Morning America one time. I'll show the video made tomorrow. I was an, I was a moron. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was driving in the country and a, and a bunch of turkeys are next to my car and I roll down the window and I do this. <laughs> and the one, the leader, like the Darth Vader of the group, <laughs> lunged at my car oh. and those things have razor yeah. uh, talons yeah and I got a, I, I showed the video on the news and this woman emailed me she goes you are dumb <laughs> they could slice you and I'm like yeah so oh I would never mess with a turkey again okay the end there we go yeah you have yeah. a lot of wild bird encounters with your car I know <laughs> <laughs> more, more just for you now. If you need a new show uh, to watch and love, and you love a great rom com, we have the answer. Fallon told us about this show yesterday, and it's already, already the number one show on Netflix. Audience, it's one of those days where I love to have a show to tell you about a show. It's called Nobody Wants This. The big news is Joanne has a new man in her life. Okay, but we're not using names, so let's just call him the Prophet. Message from Morgan. He's cuter than I expected. The brother is brutal. What are you doing? Drowning emoji. Okay, that's not. Vomit emoji. Morgan. Unplug the phone. I'm so sorry about my sister, with whom I have since cut ties. You asked me to. I'd give up. What the hell is that? It's not us. It's not? No. Well, you have to admit, you guys are a weird pair. He's responsible, kind, and you... I'm not a bad person. Tattoos, thick neck, light criminal record. That's, like, way more your type. It's so good, you guys. Fallon. Fallon, per usual, is right. Kristen Bell stars as a podcast host who falls in love with a rabbi played by the OC's Adam Brody. Yes, Seth is back, people. Yes. Yeah, Seth is back. Um, you were right. I felt I, I love this already, and I only got to consume one episode mm -hmm. last night. Yeah. It's so damn charming. It's so good. It's so funny. It's not cheesy like so many other rom-coms are, and I'm so happy rom-coms are back. I love them. Jeff said he binged three episodes last night. I went through it very quickly. Yeah. I think there were ten episodes total. But, yeah, it's like where has uh, he been? Like from the, since the OC. I know he married Leighton Meester from yeah. Gossip Girl, which is like a fun little crossover. But his chemistry with Kristen Bell is so good. Everyone keeps uh, – Jeff, I say everyone. Jeff uh, said in our in our in our little gossip session today, episode two. I guess there's a kiss that oh. is electric. Their ki their first kiss is what you want the first kiss to be like. Yeah, really, it's great. It's great. Did you have a good first kiss with Jake? Yes, Jake was very hot about it because <laughs> it it was no. This is like one of the the hottest things that Jake did because he's a very confident man. We pull up to our house after the, like the first official date, and I said, "Oh, here's the awkward part, where we you know decide if we have a first kiss." And he goes, "Oh no, I'm kissing you." And I was like, "Okay, oh, oh, all right." Oh. And then he did beak me a little bit because he has a bigger nose, you know. But <laughs> but. But it was cute. It was cute. He beat you? He beaked me, yeah. That's fine. But it was like, it was hot enough that I was like, all right, well, we'll look past the, the you know. The beaker moment. The beaking, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Sticking with TV next up, time to head back. Oh, by the way, you can watch it on Netflix. Uh, it's time to head back to the Big Apple. Season two of the rebooted Real Housewives of New York premieres Tuesday night on Bravo, season 15, uh, featuring new taglines and a new housewife. Why date their dad when you can just be mother? In the cocktail of life, a New Yorker is never shaken nor stirred. Just like a painting, you need a couple of looks to figure me out. I may be hungry, but at least I'm not thirsty. I'm not up and coming. I am already there. Love looks good on me, but Doug, what doesn't? Not everyone can be Jenna Lyons, but they can try. Sure can try, Jenna Lyons. I love you. So, thanks to my friends at Bravo, I got a screener of the first episode. I caught it last night. Again, it premieres uh, Tuesday night. Uh, here's the headline. Uh, you know, if you know anything about me, you know I am a Roni diehard. I'm not a fair weather Roni fan. I love it from season one. I fall asleep to whatever season at night. Season 15, from what I can gather from the premiere, has it. 
it, it, it looks like it's just enough fun drama and serious drama. There seems to be something up between Bryn, the first woman you saw in the tagline, and Uba. Something really bad has happened. They don't tell you what it is, but it's so bad. The reason, other the reason I showed you the opening credits, they show at the very beginning of a season premiere the shooting day for the opening credits, and Bren and Uba cannot even be near each other. Oh. Something has happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it looks really, really good uh, tonight. I'm, you don't watch any of the Housewives, no, right? No, I yeah, don't, yeah. yeah. Oh, Roni, I, I, oh, I love it so much. Is uh, Jenna Lyons... I do, I love it so much. What? Has, she, has Jenna Lyons been on all the seasons, or is she new? Jenna is new. They rebooted the show last year, season okay. 14, a whole new cast. Jenna Lyons came back. If she's watching, I love you. I was going to say, she's the only name I recognize. I love Jenna yeah. Lyons so much. And Raquel's the new one. Um, she's cool, I think. So, yeah, I'm down. From a show I'm loving to a show I thought I would love un uh, 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 until I uh, uh, watched it. <laughs> Next in the dish. The new ABC show, Dr. Odyssey, premiered last week. Aaron, oh. you. this may be your last day on The Jason Show, Aaron. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Odyssey stars Joshua Jackson as the onboard doctor of a luxury cruise ship. <clears throat> the American Broadcasting Company should be embarrassed to put that on TV. It is one of the worst network shows I have seen in years. In years. It makes Cop Rock look like Hill Street Blues. <laughs> And that's a very old reference, but if you Google it, you'll laugh. <laughs> this is horrible. It looks horrible. It looks cheap. It's, there's no character development. I know we're in an age of tick. There is no character <laughs> development. Aaron? Aaron has the exact opposite opinion. She's melting It's over horrible, there. Aaron. Oh, it's gosh. It is, I'm not joking. I'm not even being Jason. It I'm is not so, even being Jason. Aaron, come sit on this couch right Aaron, now. Come up Aaron, here. Come here. Our audience coordinator, Aaron Schwab. Aaron, it, Hello. it looks cheap. It's acted cheap. There's no character development. I don't care about anybody. There's a broken private part within six minutes of the show. Awesome. No. It's so awesome. Listen. I have I, one of those, and I don't want to see it broken. You, I was going to say you have a private part that's broken. Yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, those two have super awesome. Philip Basu and Pacey have super awesome chemistry with each other, and I wanted, they were dancing, and I was like, yeah. Uh. <laughs> I have worked on a ship, and, like, I am obsessed. I love it. It is so good. The ship is gorgeous. Oh, no, it's not. God. It looks like a, it's from Big Lots. It's horrible. <laughs> it's beautiful. The set is so cheap. It looks like a bunch of kindergartners went to Big Lot and said, hey, kindergartners, build a set. Oh. Okay, it's I think we should, do, it's cheap. we should do a side-by-side -side of us watching episode we should. two. We should. Why don't we set it up like we did the we other should. day and we'll just watch it on the couch together. We, we, it's horrible. We can just shame each other the whole time. Don't watch it. Dr. Odyssey. You should watch it. Don't watch it. It's awesome. It's horrible. Aaron Schwab, everybody. Well, okay. now, uh, Aaron. now I want to watch it. Did you see her little head just popping up like a, like a little gopher in my shot? <laughs> Should we go? Should I go to break or should I do the story? Okay, Next I'll do story. the story. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Next, when it comes to high fashion, we all uh, know anything goes. One famous singer proved, proved just that. Audience, wait till you see this. With her outfit at Paris Fashion Week. Here it is. She was, sp <laughs> <laughs> she was spotted wearing a black ski mask at a fashion show squatting. Uh, now, it probably, it probably uh, wasn't to stay warm since she was also spotted, uh, sported a lace top and a mini skirt. Well, here's another shot. There we go. Any idea who this is? No. Piazzadora? No, no. It's Camila Cabello. Oh. That's right, right there, that's right. Okay, we always like to be hip with the trends, so we decided to, to embrace this trend. So we decided to put producer Bjorn in that very look. Audience, give it up for Peter, producer Bjorn. <laughs> Okay.
Let me tell ya. I'm telling ya. If, if season 10 doesn't earn us an Emmy, I don't know what will. We'll be right back. Back in a moment, everybody. Talking with actress Sarah Paulson about her new scary movie. And then. <laughs> the latest TikTok trend that involves chickens. Yep, chickens. And we're opening up the mailbag to see what you have to say this week. That and more when we continue. Can you imagine, can you imagine some grandma never watching us ever and turning on the TV to see Bjorn in a scary mask and just, where's the remote? Yeah, anyway, welcome back. Uh, as Halloween approaches, you might be uh, seeking out something scary to put on. And if you're a fan of horror, you know Sarah Paulson as a standout uh, from uh, all the American horror stories. I love her. I loved her on Broadway. Yeah, Tony Award winner. Well... She's now, uh, she's now starring in a psychological horror movie taking us back in time. Watch this. Doctor says it's just too much dust in the air. It's a battle. It's good you brought the girls, Margaret. Why is that? I guess you haven't heard about the drifter. Killed the mama and the kids. Did they ever catch the drifter? It's like he just melted into the dust. Yeah, that's part of the trailer for Hold Your Breath. It's set in the 30s in Oklahoma, where a young mother is convinced that a sinister presence in dust storms uh, is threatening her family. Well, the movie comes out this week, and a few days ago, I had the chance to interview uh, Sarah, as well as her co-star, Anna Lee Ashford. Uh, take a look. I... I always like to start an interview with a compliment. I think there's too much negativity in the world, so I always try to start with an authentic compliment. And luckily, the compliment for the both of you is the same because you both possess this. Thank you for always coming to play. When you do something like this, which I'm sure you get sick of answering the same 150 questions, but no matter what you are on, whether it is a late night show or something like this, you guys, both of you, come to play. So thank you. Thank you for doing that. Well, thank you for starting this conversation off with a, such a nice compliment. Well, I mean it. You both do. So I just, I, as someone that does this job, I just appreciate that. And I think the viewers does uh, as well. Let me move on to the movie. Okay, so let me get one of those boring questions out of the way that for the people that haven't seen it, haven't seen the trailer, either one of you can take this. Kind of walk us through, hold your breath, if you will. Hit it, Annalie. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll do it, but I like when you do it. Oh, and I like it when you do it so much. Really? <sighs> yeah, I'll, okay, I'll go. Okay. <laughs> um, this is the story of a woman living in the 1930s Dust Bowl and how she navigates both the madness and the magic of being the mother of a family during a climate disaster. Um, and what it looks like to also navigate the perils of mental health when there is no, um, there's no support for, for mental health. Um, it's really an uncomfortable reflection on what it was like to be a woman in the 1930s. <laughs> I, <laughs> that was great. That was She's fantastic. so good at it. I love it. That was good. Well, Sarah, let me ask you, let me piggyback off that. As the star and executive producer, I, 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 what I felt watching the movie was, and it's subconscious of like, what's scarier than somebody with a mask, which you have battled in other projects, is something very, I don't want to say normal, but something very normal like dust is actually more terrifying than somebody in the woods with the mask. That was kind of one of the things that washed over me. Do you agree? 
I completely agree. I completely agree. There is something I think more terrifying. Uh, there's there is something that I think is that works uh, better to me in a movie like this is like you don't take the extreme of some monster with eight legs and seven heads who lives in the woods, maybe or maybe not in someone's imagination or in reality. I, I think it's a scarier thing to watch a person try to battle a sort of common what we would think is like a household ex a daily experience of, of human life on planet Earth is, you know, battling dirt or cleaning or taking care of that kind of thing. Something about it being in the air and it sort of permeating every, you know, every crevice. Um, there's not a single place to go to get air that isn't filled with this dust. Um, is just really... Uh, for for me, um, it just makes me automatically start to feel like I can't breathe. So I think it's a potent image and a um just just more terrifying than than any, you know, Jason with a big knife. Although I wouldn't like to talk to him in a dark alley either, but I'm just saying given my name is Jason, probably right. not either. There I we apologize. go. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you both so much. Thank you. A little, uh, it, it, those we call them satellite interviews. They're always hard to try to get a good rhythm going, you know, because it's so disjointed. So I'll give you a little behind the scenes, a little nugget there. Go back and watch that later when it goes on iTunes. Uh, uh, goes on uh, iTunes. It goes on YouTube. <laughs> um, what is this? 2004. Know, but yeah. go and just know the entire time I shot that at my house. That's my house. The entire time my puppy is biting my leg. Uh, <laughs> Milo is underneath me, like playing, and I'm just trying to look right at the camera. <laughs> Hold your breath. By the way, it comes out on Hulu this Thursday, October 3rd. We'll be right back. <laughs> He's trying to concentrate, and he's like. Let's make Back to the show. Welcome back. I'm trying to, uh, uh, with my help from my buddy Fallon here, I'm trying to be more active on TikTok as I turn 50. Uh, and I came across a new game that we just had to try because... It's absolutely ridiculous. It's called Scream Chicken. <laughs> it's a side-scrolling game, kind of like, think Super Mario Brothers, but instead of buttons or controls, <laughs> you move the chicken with your voice, and you have to squawk like a chicken to make it jump. Thank you, audience. Uh, uh, for it to walk, you make a quiet chicken sound. Am I really reading this? Yeah. 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 To make it walk, you go like this. <laughs> and if you want it to jump, you have to chicken squawk louder. So, of course, the producers thought it would be a great idea for Fallon and I to try it. Look. <laughs> oh. 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 You died. Damn it. Okay, try it again. Okay. Okay, you gotta look up. Okay. Oh my god, you right on the spine. It's too. So, so I didn't realize Fallon yelled at me. Fallon's like, you keep you keep going too loud and it's falling on the spike. Yeah. There's a big spike that the chicken can impale itself on. Yeah. Jason went too hard too fast, okay? You gotta pull it back a little bit on the first jump, apparently. We learned. Yeah, yeah. so I, I was screaming, I was squawking too loud. By the way, we're in the actual offices with everyone doing sales calls and meetings yeah. and doing this. Yeah. So we tried it again. Fallon corrected me, so I tried to lower my chicken squawking, and we did it again. Look at this. It's too much every time. Damn it, I keep killing the chicken. Let off. Oh, oh my gosh. You your box is intense. My, 
I, we tried so hard. Yeah, we did. Now I'm going to do that all day until my husband leaves me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Can you win? Do you know if you can win or is it a winning? There is an end to okay. it? Oh, oh, my God. We, uh, uh, before the radio show this morning, all I did was search for, there are grandmas doing it, yeah. there are kids doing it, mm -hmm. everybody of every age is doing this. I and love it. Yeah. I had such a good time. Now, if you want to do it yourself, mm -hmm. go ahead, go, now, why am I explaining this? Uh, yeah. You explain it better. You can go on TikTok, and then they, if you understand TikTok, there are filters, and you just choose the chicken one. There you go. That's it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, I can do that, yeah. yeah. I'm trying to... The script was right. I'm trying to use TikTok more. I got an account. It's Mr. Jason Matheson. You can follow me. Oh, if you're nasty. Well, yeah, I mean, no, Jason, my name was taken by okay. some man. Um, if he's watching, uh, please DM me. Uh, I'll give you some biscuits or something for my name <laughs> back. But yeah, somebody has just my name. Okay. So I have to put Mr. Jason Matheson. Gotcha. So, I don't All know. right. We'll All be right. right back. Back in a moment, everybody. <laughs> Well, we love getting messages. Speaking of social media, we love getting messages from you on social, email, uh, even snail mail. I got a couple today Ooh. from a from a prisoner. Two. I love two from a prisoner. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, prisoners. Uh, yeah. It's time to open up the Jason Show mailbag. Here we go, Leo. You got me. I like it. I like that they watch the show. I like, you know, anyway. First up, a big reaction to yesterday's show. We dedicated the hour to the fight against breast cancer. Stephanie Hansen talked uh, about going through the disease and what not to say to someone dealing with cancer. Luann says uh, today's show was wonderful. The information, the bravery of the survivors. Thank you so much. Lisa Marie says Stephanie literally said everything I felt going through my cancer. Blunt honest and real and Barb says yeah and uh, Barb says Stephanie's expl uh, explanation of why not to use warrior words with people dealing with cancer finally cleared that up for me thank you so much yeah I heard absolutely I, I heard from a, a friend of mine who was a widow and uh, I and she goes may I uh, she sent me a text she goes may I comment on today's show, and I thought, oh, well, yeah, of course you can. I, I love her. And she goes, can I just tell you a lot of the things not to say to a cancer survivor? She echoed. She goes, it's the, almost the same as what not to say to a widow yeah. or a widower. And I thought, oh, that's good. To, I mean, that's good to yeah. know. Yeah. I, I, I thought, oh, I, I can see where that would be trans. Absolutely. Some of those would be transferable. Yes, for sure. Like if you're offering, one of the big ones that I took away was um, kind of like open-ended offers without just doing it and I'm Ding. definitely guilty of that me like too. being like hey if you need anything well they're not gonna take the time to tell me what they need so just do something to help and whether it's it, I don't have to make a meal I can like she said grab pizza and be like hey I'm grabbing this pizza I'm gonna bring it over and drop it off on your doorstep I recently did that for a family member um, uh, who has been in the hospital it just came up out of the blue was in the hospital for like three or four weeks and he has a he has a sense of humor like mine so every day I send him a highly inappropriate joke oh. and yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's nice yeah, and it just, you know, just, it. Yeah. Uh, yeah yeah next an email from Sean and Lisa in Utah hi guys they send us a picture saying big fans of the show hi guys hi. Uh, the couple says uh, we give you our vote for the sexiest gay male talk show yeah. host over 50 yeah <laughs> Sexiest over 50, gay, six, yeah, anyway. That is in response to the People Magazine did the, yeah. or someone did sexiest, vote for the sexiest TV host, talk show host. Well, that means you're, you are ranking above Andy Cohen. I mean, well, there's that. Yeah, yeah. So thank you guys in Utah. Uh, Stacy is next. Hi, Stacy. Uh, she emailed us and said, let's look at her email. Uh, everyone in the house knows I shall not turn off the TV until the Jason show is over. You're so real uh, funny, and I must say, you're aging very well. Ooh, uh, yeah. yeah, you are, girl. One day, my family was watching music videos, and I said, Jason looks like George Michael. <laughs> um... 
That is that is very nice. My mother loved George Michael. I think we do we have a side by side. Let's see this. Oh, or no, just a music video. Well, first of all, I could it's, never. Uh, no, what? yeah. No, not at all. Not and let's say I could never fit into those jeans. Ever, ever, ever. No. Nope. Yeah, that's... Uh, I think you just need to get the, like, the hair different. That's, I, that's the only thing holding you back. Maybe. That and looking that cool and music <laughs> ability and yeah, my mom did. Oh, I, one of my like memories, my mom always had a calendar hanging in the kitchen and she had a George Michael calendar. Oh, nice, and yeah. that was one of the first signs where I was like, ooh, maybe I play for the other team. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because I like March a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Tracy is, <laughs> Tra <laughs> March was real good. Tracy is next. Hi, Tracy. She emailed uh, to say, I was hanging out with my grandson and we were watching the State Fair episode where producer Bjorn was being tormented on the State Fair rides. A few weeks uh, later, her grandson Connor drew a card showing Bjorn on the rides. I mean, wow. look at that. Now, I can't wait for the youngster to draw Bjorn from today's show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, I received two gifts in the mail uh, this week. Sandy and someone else sent us... Gammy. Well, who is it? Gammy is G the other woman who oh, sent Oh, Gammy it. Yes. sent mm -hmm. us white squirrels. Oh, uh, yeah, there we go. Yes! Because... Ow! If you, yeah, if you, if you missed it, if you missed it, uh, our building, not our building, but our, our grounds here at the studios are, we have a, we have a squirrel living here named Al that <laughs> Fallon runs into all the time. We're they, friends. They go out for coffee. They're yeah. good friends. So now we're we just getting. We vent to each other all the time. That's right. <laughs> that damn Jason. Uh, so we have two. So thank you, everybody. And now we'll, we'll hide these somewhere on the set. Yeah, there we go. We'll be right back, back in a moment. Let's make it a good day. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you for being here. We are so happy as uh, season 10 rolls on to be in markets all across the country. Uh, if you have forgotten or maybe you have a friend, here they are. We've made a handy dandy little graphic. Uh, Twin Cities, Duluth, Rochester, Milwaukee, La Crosse, Eau Claire, Cedar Rapids. Uh, oh, Su Cedar Rapids. God, we love you. Su uh, Sioux City, a home of uh, some family members. Sioux Falls, South Dakota. I'll be seeing you soon. We love you, Sioux Falls. Chicago, Quincy and Illinois, Detroit, Seattle, and my second home of Orlando. Oh, our Orlando affiliate treats us so well. We love our Orlando station. Be sure to let your friends in these cities know when and where they can catch us. And don't forget, if you're here in uh, Minnesota, come join our studio audience. Head to eventbrite.com and search for The Jason Show. There's even a, an Eventbrite app. Go ahead and do that. You're in by 930 Central. You're out by 1115. And full episodes are always on YouTube, Tubi, and Fox Local. We'll be right back. Fancy camera shot there. Look at that. Okay, uh, as we wrap up today, let's briefly talk about tomorrow. Uh, now, tomorrow, uh, you're going to see Fallon putting me uh, literally and figuratively in one of the most uncomfortable positions I've ever been in on television or in life. Yeah, And so you're welcome in advance. That's right. <laughs> so uh, Fallon decided it would be a great idea to have me try Pilates. <laughs> now... <laughs> Wait, don't clap until you see it. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I said this before in preparation for this. I am not flexible. Mm -hmm. I, I have, uh, yeah, th thank you, staff, for laughing at that. I, uh, I am stubborn, but I am physically not flexible. Mm -hmm. And uh, Fallon took full advantage of that. Uh, there, there was a moment where the instructor, God bless her, uh, said to me, and I quote, Jason, it's time for you to put your right foot in the sling. The, and I, no, the strap. The strap, yeah. <laughs> and I looked at her and I go, I think you're going to have to assist me with that. And, and, then, and then she put the right one in there and then I said, oh, I think you're going to have to assist me with the left one too. Mm -hmm. And then as I'm in the straps with my butt in the air, um, I let out a noise that... <laughs> 
I let out a scream that you will oh. not hear in nature. Yeah, not a noise. I should have no. rephrased oh, that. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. wasn't a release. It wasn't a, yeah, it, it wasn't that, yeah. No, no. That's tomorrow. But right now, thanks to this audience, thanks to you for watching. If you're watching and you're a kid that's being bullied, you go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. Have a wonderful day, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Oh, it was louder than <laughs> you know.